just after the top of the hour on a beautiful Sunday night. Welcome back into the On Ringside, live from the vault in the Full Range Entertainment Studios. Yours truly, Fast Eddie Lane, behind the control panel. Welcome back. Welcoming back in tag team partners, the Wicked Nemesis. Guys, I just want to say a big shout out to Matt Sex Sales for his match last night against Nigel Sherrod. Uh, it's up on YouTube right now. Oh, good match. Like to welcome back in Mark Mabo Bowman. Eddie, yeah, you hear this? I hope it's not what that's, I think it is. That's me doing some manscaping while we're on air. And would like to welcome in our very special guest at this time. Actually, welcoming back to be on ringside, our very special guest. He was on with us during season one of The Return uh, when we were at, live at the Fox and Hound in Birmingham, Alabama for those shows. And want to, of course, as always, say thank you to the Fox and Hound for all their hospitality. Uh, Brian Alexander, Alexander the Great, glad to have you back on board, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, glad to be back on the show. And you forgot to put in there the NWA Pro South Heavyweight Champion, Brian Alexander. I'll let you say that one more time. The NWA Pro South Heavyweight Champion, Brian Alexander. Now, a lot of people know about Pro South Wrestling in the southeastern U.S. Of course, NWA Pro South, based out of Piedmont, Alabama, over in the eastern quadrant. Um, they've had a lot of great action going on. But before we start getting into that, I want to go ahead and bring it now. For those who missed the original interview that we did, uh, matter of fact, wasn't it? I believe it was you and Rigor Mortis who came out for that interview, if I remember correctly, right? Uh, yes, that was uh, Rigor Mortis coming out for Carnage Stock long, about three years ago. Yeah, it was just over. To, um, it was right at three years ago. I remember that. Um, good Lord, that has been a while. I'm feeling it now. And for everybody who is, for those who really don't know that much about Alexander the Great, Brian Alexander, um, how long have you been in the pro wrestling business? Uh, a little over eighteen years. Where all have you worked? What's been your primary base? Primary was in the uh, southeastern uh, part of the United States, Florida, New Orleans, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina, North Carolina, mainly in that area. Uh, done a lot of work with the old NAWA, back with Danny D, Sammy Kent, uh, all the way for, for, with working with Abdullah over at the Henderson's Arena back with uh, several years ago. All the way ACW, Alabama Championship Wrestling. I was there for many years. Worked with the uh, Frank the Flame Barnhill, Barnwell. He, uh, I worked all over the place. Too many of them to list, and I've had so many concussions, it's hard to name them all. <laughs> yeah. I remember the Carnage Stock Show. Everybody, I think, took some so- some shot with a foreign object of some kind or an international object. Thank you, Ted Turner. Mabo, do me a favor. Come on in with Brian Alexander. Yeah. Quick question. Are you related to Alexander the Grape from the old Otter Pot series? Not uh, from maybe the Conqueror from Europe, but not the uh, one you're currently speaking of, no. Oh, uh, so you're not related to a juicy frozen treat with the grape flavor? <laughs> not a bit, not a bit. No, okay, I'm done with this interview. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's Alexander the Grape, I believe, is what you're referring to. It was, yeah. yeah. Alexander the Grape. <laughs> Wicked Nemesis, come on in. Oh boy. Uh, where do I start? Maybe I got your direct message. I just sent that back. Uh, first of all, Brian, how you been, man? Oh, me? I am always great. Now, you used to run around with a guy, uh, I'm, I think it was called the, uh, the judge. Was that it? Yes, the judge. Very, very disturbed individual. Uh, Last I seen, he was doing a show somewhere south of Georgia or something or other, but he is absolutely maniacal. That's why I like him so much. Yeah, I remember some of the car rides that we had, uh, two shows. But uh, for what it's worth, I would go ahead and throw this out there, full disclosure, guys. Uh, one of my trainers, Damon Taz, Johnny Slaughter, Brian Alexander. Those are the guys that trained me when I got into business. And Brian Alexander and Pretty Boy Floyd. Uh, gave me some of the greatest advice of all time. Kids, stand there, shut up, and don't mess up. But, you know, a little bit <laughs> flavorful language. So, take us back to ACW. Let's, let's go back to the good old days, way back, like, like Wu-Tang Clan would say. You know, you wrestled with guys like Slaughter, and you wrestled with some of the guys that are on GCW, or, you know, used to be in Sergeant Hammer, uh, Pretty Boy Floyd, uh, of course, Damon Tess, Skidmark, all these guys. Uh, is that one of your favorite times 
in your career? If not, uh, when is it? Uh, yeah, that is probably, it's definitely one of the top two or three. Uh, ACW had a, had a real good feel to it. Uh, the show had a lot of structure. And when I come in, that structure got shaken thoroughly. So that was probably, it's definitely one of my top two, possibly top, one of the top. Uh, the other one was, uh, U.S. Play in the early 2000s with Lee Thomas, uh, doing a show in, off of Banner Parkway. Huge show. We had, we had pretty much run of the full place and that show, 2XW, it, it had a lot of heart, a lot of meaning to me. Uh, that's probably the number one favorite place I, I worked. Long, about 2000, yeah. Now, you're currently the NWA Pro South Heavyweight Champion. Uh, if you had to give a brief list of some of the championships you've held around the areas that you've worked, how many different belts would that be? Uh, <laughs> probably in the upper, upper 20s. Uh, I beat Bad Boy Billy Black for the NWA Georgia Heavyweight Champion belt. Uh, I've had several tag belts across the state of Georgia, North Georgia mainly. Uh, yeah, I, the, the NAWA heavyweight champion belt. There's been several belts that, uh, probably enough for just 20 of them, but for currently the one I have now, the NWA Pro South heavyweight belt, I'd have to say is my favorite right now. Now, I know Wicked Nemesis is notorious, and Mabo's notorious for asking about road stories. If there, <laughs> Wicked just blinked. I know it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put you on the spot. With the times that you've worked with Wicked Nemesis, what is your favorite, keeping it clean, what is your favorite whoa, Wicked whoa, Nemesis whoa, road no, story? No, yeah. Uh-huh. No, yeah. yeah. Brian, do not. <laughs> yeah, well... There was this time a tornado come through town. <laughs> and, a, and apparently when a tornado comes through a part of Alabama, they must have a drink. So with Wicked Nemesis, there was a tornado that come through. And let's say everybody that was there had a drink during the show. Right, well, where was that, Nemesis? Tell me what state, where that was at. It was in Alabama, but I'm not sure. Brooke, Brooke Slogan was actually on the show earlier. Uh, Eddie, where was that benefit show at? Oh, God. That was over in the Mulga area, backside of Pleasant Grove, Alabama, because it was a Pleasant Grove benefit. Yes, sir. That, those folks out there were, were nice enough to have us out for their tornado benefit and thoroughly alcoholed the system. Yeah, I think we had like seven kegs of beer there that day, not to mention all the other mixed drinks plus everything else that Wicked Nemesis brought, might have brought along with him. You know, there was a bonfire that day, too, and I think I think everybody partook of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have to say there probably was a bonfire that was out there. Mabo, come on back in. Yes, Brian Alexander, Alexander the Great. I was wondering if at any point in your career you may have dabbled in a little bit of ocular removal surgery on any certain people. Ah, uh, you might be referring to uh, the road trip to New Orleans, I believe. We went uh, down, myself, the late Ken Thames, we went down to uh, New Orleans, and while we're down there vasting on the city's gifts of seafood uh, Bourbon Street Naked and women. other attractions of New Orleans. <laughs> While down there, the promoter had a problem with one of his guys and said, I believe he needs to see out of one less eye. Okay. So I had to politely extract the eye from the skull, which is pretty nasty surgery during the middle of a match. Care to go into is any more? The, go ahead. Is that the episode you're talking about? I, I believe so. I was just made aware of this uh, fable, and I was wanting to get as much detail as possible that uh, it would not incriminate you. <laughs> well, uh, Brian, see, what happened to that I eye after it was removed? The what? What happened to that eyeball after it was removed from said skull? Well, when we pulled it out, I just let it hang there because I, you know, I wanted him to put it back in. That way, he would be able to see the error of his ways. What had happened was the guy that was promoting the show 
had a uh, underage daughter that this other said person was, let's say, eyeing a little too hard. So being a close personal friend, he asked me to help him out with the situation. And for a mon monetary exchange, there was an agreement that was met. <laughs> Now, based on that, let me go ahead and ask on a I mean, on a semi serious vein. Looking back over the time that you've done in the business, what has been the most outrageous match that you have ever been a part of that you just walked away from it smiling? And by the same token, another a match of the same ilk that you've walked away going, how the hell did I get talked into that? For you, what are those? <laughs> uh, most of them, and and usually it was a. Uh... A creature of my own demise. There was, there was a match, a cage match with a with a young guy named uh, oh, his name was Shane Williams. What they call him? Big Country Shane Williams. Thank you, thank you. Big Country Shane Williams. We had a cage match up in OCW, and we had a barbed wire uh, <laughs> pendulum, like a about a fifty pound weight, just wrapped up in barbed wire, hanging about three feet off the ground, and would swing out and bust you in the face and we had a cage somehow during the match we removed the side of the cage with a with a high cross body i think i hit the side of the cage the cage wall comes off we hit the floor there's barbed wire and all kind of items flying around the room and 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 this kid i broke every item i could pick up i broke a chair across him i broke tables uh, everything I could pick up and hit him with, I, I broke everything across him. And when I get to the back, I sit down and I go, whew, that was pretty hard. He comes back with a bruise from the back of his heels to the top of his skull and goes, you think it was it real enough for him? <laughs> that one was, was probably one of the worst. Uh, and then one of my personal favorites was the car match of Carnage Stock. And, and if he was there to miss it, I can't describe the current scene. Yeah, because now therein lies a question. Because you sound like you have just as much fun working weapons matches as you, as you do working straight ahead traditional matches. Is that true, or is there a preference in your world? Actually, uh, I would rather work a technical psychological match with my opponent. But usually, somewhere along the lines. I would have to say the Hyde personality takes over, and <laughs> like the Hulk, he just wants to smash. So I guess I have a, I have a part of me that, that wants to go technical, and then the 10-year-old kid in me going, hit him with this, hit him with this. And so it, it's kind of one-sided, but <laughs> I try. Wicked, I hear you laughing. Come on in. Oh Jesus! I I have uh, I see this see this is bad because I want to tell stories about Brian that he's missing out. Uh, whenever we worked the show, what was the RPW show? What did RPW stand for in Piedmont? Where uh, well, actually, where Pro South is now, Brian? Rampage, uh, Rampage Pro Wrestling, I believe it was. Yeah, I see. That's what I think it was before there was the one one of Robbins. Uh, it was you and uh, Pretty Boy Floyd against uh, Jess Wade. And uh, notorious DOG when they were doing the uh, Rebel Alliance gimmick, I do believe. Uh, yeah. Whenever, whenever you guys drove the car to the ring, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Well, Brian Alexander and Pretty Boy Floyd, pretty great, show up to this car and they drive the car to the to the ring. They they open up the back door of uh, I think it's covered up now, Pro South. Open it up and they drive this car there. Okay. This is the first. This, this is the first hardcore ultra hardcore violent match I've ever seen where the crowd was so sickened by the shots that these guys were taking they were getting they were power driving each other through the front windshield Brian Alexander power bombed Jess Wade and his head clipped the corner of it and dented it right where the windshield was <laughs> at the end of that match at the one two three everybody stood there nobody said a word I started laughing it was the only thing I could do because there's a manager you know I just start feeding Brian stuff. Brian I mean there's broken glass I'm feeding it to Brian, and Brian and Pretty Gr and Pretty Boy Floyd are literally like stabbing Jess Wade and uh, Notorious D.O.G. I mean, it was the most violent match that I've seen, and literally, like these guys had no idea uh, what to expect from this. And second of all, I think I've told this story before. I think I told it the first time Bishop and I were on here. 
Uh, Brian Alexander was wrestling AJ Styles. AJ Styles comes over, and AJ Styles has been very distant from us. Elijah, uh, not Elijah Burke, uh, Elix Skipper sat down at the table with us. It's Damon Taz, Johnny Slaughter, uh, Aron Bishop, myself, Brian Alexander, and, uh, and Elix Skipper. You know, we're all just sitting around. Uh, now I know you remember this. Is it Pete? It was in uh, Heflin. AJ comes up and was like, hey, let's go over. So he says, I'm going to do this. He starts calling out these, these names by all these what he would call them, like the Styles Clash and, and the Styles Driver, and Brian goes, okay, 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 okay. Now, I know there was a huge bonfire backstage, uh, you know, b- behind the gym that Brian and I had gotten caught up in, you know, in the whirlwind, and, and you know, and I, I really couldn't see that well, and I felt like, you know, I was spaced out, and I'm sure Brian did too. Brian comes over, sit down, and he looks all over, he's like, guys, I don't know what the he just said, because I don't understand a word of it. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that show, yeah. there were guys standing out beside Bishop's uh, SUV with knives. They would not let they would not let Brian, myself, Johnny, and Bishop leave leave because we had we had infuriated the AJ Styles. And I remember yeah. looking at Johnny and Johnny Slaughter looking at Johnny's like, "Kid, welcome to the business." And so it began. The other the other part about that day that was that was so funny to me was. Everybody was excited about AJ's be- AJ being at the show, but he was Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. Everywhere he turned, people meet him. Go, hey, AJ Styles. You know, I thought you'd be bigger. And I heard about ten to fifteen people say that, and I like to have cried laughing at him. Uh, oh my God! Yes, who was somebody? I remember that somebody was to go to show. Hey, and then they're like, hey, can I get a pic? Can I get an autograph? But it's for my son. And somebody's like, you don't have kids. <laughs> yes. yes, everybody was like, I thought you'd be bigger. <laughs> true. Oh, yes, I do remember that. Mabo, come on in. Oh, wait a second. Somehow or another, think we lost Mabo on the network. Hang on. Three, two, one. I'll fix that in post. Mabo, come on back in. Yeah, what happened? I don't know. Are we still on? Yes. Now. Yes, we're very much on. I want to hear more road stories. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to go for a quick lightning round. Nah, forget you that. Do it. Do it? Brian, are you Do up it. for it? What, for another road story? No, a lightning round real quick. The, uh, the, the, oh, sure. the lightning round real quick. I'll give you the short synopsis of this. There is no wrong answer to any of these questions. And God only knows what Wicked Nemesis is going to say right now. So let's go ahead and run it. If you're up for it, we roll it. It is the Mike Quackenbush lightning round from this vantage point. Who were the better Super Friends sidekicks, Zan and Jaina or Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog? Well, Wonder Dog. Okay. Wicked. Better Slaughter, Joe or John? John. Mabo. Sexier animal for bestiality, a a freshly shaved llama or a manatee? A manatee. Doris Roberts from Everybody Loves Raymond or Betty White? Who would have the better sex tape? Oh, Betty White. What food can you not resist, even when dieting? Uh, the why. What is your ultimate, I just <laughs> couldn't help myself moment? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I just got that. Oh, I was there. <laughs> just, that's why I said keep going. <laughs> what is your ultimate, I just couldn't help myself moment? The water. There you go. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Horseshack from Welcome Back, Cotter. Steve Urkel or Ace Haven? Who do you trust more as a hairstylist? Uh, Steve Urkel. <laughs> Optimus Prime, Voltron, or the Season One Power Rangers Megazord, which is more likely to get cavity searched at O'Hare, I mean at um, Hartsfield Airport in Atlanta. Uh, C, the Power Rangers. <laughs> Wicked Nemesis. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, man, I'm crying. Okay. Uh, sorry, give me a second. Okay. <laughs> Seconds up. Come on. <laughs> okay. 15-year-old girl or 60-year-old woman? Does she have her teeth? Golf. <laughs> 50-year-old woman. <laughs> Mabo. What letter comes after W? <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
You have a chance to pick your tag team partners going into a war game style match. Who do you pick? In sync or the Backstreet Boys? In yes, sync. <laughs> Which would you rather play, the violin or the fiddle? Fiddle. <laughs> team Alexander, what's your mascot? Destruction. Which would, which would you be more afraid of, boxing an octopus underwater or a shoot fight with Dan Severn's mustache? The mustache. Where are you more afraid of showing up, the National Enquirer or TMZ? TMZ. Already been on the Enquirer. Thought for sure he's going to say the why. Wicked Nemesis. Greatest supervillain of all time. Darth Vader. Mabo. Favorite pair of boxer shorts to wear. Stewie. Boxer shorts. Family guy. Let's go for the Overdrive 5 real quick. Which is more fun for you to work, a computer or an Etch-A-Sketch? An Etch-A-Sketch. What is the craziest sign that someone has made for you that you've seen at a show? Uh, You're full of crap, maybe diaper. Pick an athlete. Pick an athlete from another sport that you would like to train to be your tag team partner. Uh, the kid that swam, Michael Phelps. Okay. He does grass. If, <laughs> if you were not in pro wrestling, which major sport would you be playing, and at what position? NASCAR. All the other sports just take one ball. There you go. And what is one question that you're always afraid that you're going to be asked during an interview? Is Jess Wade my brother? <laughs> bonus bonus round. If your career and life story is made into a film, who's going to play the lead? Uh, Patrick Swayze from the 80s. There you go. <laughs> and Brian Alexander has successfully survived the lightning round. Now, Brian, if I may, moving into modern day, moving into very um, very current day, you are a part of a huge event that is going to take place this coming Friday night, October the 28th, in Piedmont, Alabama. The location, 627 Southern Avenue, also called the Pro South Arena. It is NWA Pro South Wrestling's Wicked Havoc Two. Now, you, among all the stars that are going to be on this show, you are going to be fe um, featured in, of course, you're defending the the NWA Pro South Heavyweight Championship, and you're going to be taking on their number one contender, the future classic Tyler Gage. Um, give us a little bit of backstory on this match. Oh, the backstory. Well, after I got to Pro South, I was setting such a blaze that I was not going to pull us down left and right, left and right. Well, this. Tyler Gage kid, in the middle of the match, jumps up and proclaims that he has a spine buster for me, the heavyweight champion. So I took my flaming bat, went out there and beat some sense into him. So there's really not a whole lot of issue. It's just a matter of me showing up on Friday, coming to the ring, him not showing up. The ten count, then I retain my NWA Pro South Heavyweight Belt. That's that's pretty much the backstory. I hit him with a flaming bat. He cries on the ground. Don't show up for four weeks. I keep my belt at Wicked Heavy. Now, also featured during this um, will be a Texas Bull Rope Grudge Match. The Hall of Famer Rick Freeman will be taking on the Southern Stud Waylon Rhodes. How much do you know about this storyline? Uh, what I have found out is Rick Freeman has become a coward and is bringing a mystery opponent for Waylon Rhodes. Instead of taking himself out there and handling his business, he's bringing a mystery opponent. It doesn't matter because Waylon is going to win. Waylon Rhodes right. is the southern stud. Am I right, Brian? Absolutely. He has the mustache of a southern stud. Yep. Waylon Rhodes is a southern stud. Yes, sir. I, and I, I endorse Waylon Rhodes, guys, as you guys know. Uh, Waylon Rhodes is the cream of the crop. He rises to the top. He never eats a pig because a pig is a cop. 
Now, also, let me go ahead and say this because from um, we're working to reschedule. Waylon was originally scheduled to be with us this past Wednesday night on the uh, midweek meltdown, but unfortunately, because of um, situations in play, he was not able to join us. Uh, we are working to get Waylon on here on Beyond Ringside this Wednesday night, nine fifteen Eastern, eight fifteen Central time. So we're looking forward to trying to get everything put together on that. Um, also featured on this show is a career versus career match. No disqualification, no count out. Brandon Collum takes on the last hero, Ace Haven. Brian, your thoughts on that match? That match, uh, there is a lot of animosity between these two guys. Uh, they were pretty much at once as close as brothers, but now they they pretty much hate each other. Uh, Columbine has just disgraced Ace Haven so many ways and so many different avenues he's taken to just personally destroy Ace, and Ace is fed up with it, so he put his career versus Brandon Collum's career. And personally, if rage is a factor, I think Ace Haven might come out better, but a few weeks ago, Brandon Collum stabbed Ace in the neck with a screwdriver, so I wouldn't count him out yet either. Wow, sounds like you took a John Rare lessons for a minute there. (laughs) Um, Oh my God. I had to say it. Now, this and much more, there is going to be... Now, if you had to make a prediction in the Column Haven match, um, who do you think is going to end up losing their career in this one, or do you want to go there? Ah, uh, It's too close to say. Uh, personally, I hate both of them. Uh, Brandon Collum, who was the champion, and I took the belt away from him. I have no feeling towards him. Ace Haven's been very smart and stayed very much out of my way. So... Their careers, one or the other, they're just another fish in the pond. Now, I also understand there is going to be a costume contest for the kids. There is going to be, um, there are actually a couple other matches from what I understand that are tentative to be signed for this event. Once again, it's going to be this coming Friday night, October the 28th at the Pro South Arena, 627 Southern Avenue in Piedmont, Alabama. Ticket prices, get this folks. General admission, $6. Ringside seating, $7. And remember, this is a Friday night show. There's, there are things, you can, you can drop $7 just before you even walk out of your house. And if you're in the eastern Alabama, western Georgia area, and you get a chance to catch a solid pro wrestling promotion such as Pro South Wrestling, having one of their bigger shows of the year, $7 ringside? Come on. You cannot beat that. All three of us on this panel will agree to that. Even Brooks, if he was here, would agree to that. And, I mean, you get to see some good, old-fashioned, hard-hitting professional wrestling action. Top to bottom, start to finish on the card. Now, I'm going to put you into promo mode for a hot second, Brian. If you had to deliver that straight-ahead message right now using this forum directly to Tyler Gage, what would that message be? A message to Tyler Gage would have to be you need to do what's best and stay inside your yard sitting on the porch where all the other dogs who can't run need to stay. You come down there and said your spine buster was going to put me down and take my belt. My bat beats spine buster any day. A little bit of hot flaming action in your face, don't come to Pro South. Don't come Friday. Don't even hobble in and pretend you're going to act like you're going to take my belt because I got one thing for you. The NWA Pro South Heavyweight Champion is better than you. Wicked Nemesis, one more round with Brian Alexander. Yeah, I will actually be there this Friday to uh, review the the entire show. Of course, because it has Wicked in the name, you know I'm going to show up. But Ace Haven, you know, threw the olive branch out there, and I will actually be reviewing it for PW 24-7 Radio. So I will be there Friday night in the match I'm actually looking forward to, besides, of course, Brian's match. But, you know, Brian's the man. I mean, we saw Tyler Gage get knocked out at the Will Grayson show because he jumped up in the entrance of a door. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> I heard about that. I heard about that, and I've seen the pictures it's on, on YouTube. YouTube. It's out. <laughs> Mark Bowman, Maybo, come on in. One more round with Brian Alexander. Whoa, yeah. Hold on, I think, hold on, maybe not to cut you off, not to cut you off. I want to see what I, I think to finish Columbine against Ace Haven. Okay, I want to see how this goes because you're looking at the two faces pretty much of that company. Uh, before, you know, Brian was there, you know, when I, 
first started, those two were the two guys that they made the backbone of that company. So I am looking forward to that match. Sorry, Mabo. Mabo, go ahead. Okay. I was just gonna say, um, hey Brian, if if I come to the show, will you make me like a, a meatball sandwich? <laughs> I don't believe so. Why would I make you a meatball sandwich? Because I was going to come to the show. Well, okay. If you want to come to the show, I'll point you in the direction of Subway. There you go. Okay. Well, can I can I borrow five dollars to get a sub then? You must think I'm made out of money. Which oh, right. Yeah, I'm the champ. I am made out of money. Yeah. Well, I, I thought you were made out of squishy parts like flesh and organs and bones and muscles. And a flaming bat. And a flaming bat. You have a flaming bat? Absolutely. How do you think I cause so much havoc doing what I do? Doesn't PETA you like get upset when you set it on fire? Oh. I think he's referring to your lower ambulatory extremity there, Brian, so that's what I thought he was. Uh there you geez. go. Brian, it has been great having you back on the show. The door, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The door is always open. You've got my cell phone number. If you've got major events coming up, just shoot me a text. Let me know. We'll make sure to get the word out and love to have you come on back. Um, come on back on the show somewhere down the line. Absolutely. Uh, great to come back anytime. You got it. And folks, now before we let you run, let me go ahead and get it out there. Um, where can people track you down on the web personally? Ah, uh, my Facebook page is where most of it happens. Uh, I believe it's under Brian Alexander. Uh, it's the pretty one, you know, the picture of me. The other one is uh, ProSouth.com. I'm on ProSouth every Friday night. Be a week at Havoc this week. Looking forward to the show, man. Really, look, I wish I could be there. Um, unfortunately, I have two engagements on Friday, and I can't break them. But, I'm, folks, like I said, if you get a chance to, Eastern Alabama, Western Georgia, you get a chance to, check it out. Piedmont, Alabama, this Friday night, October the 28th. Pro South Wrestling and Wicked Havoc. Ladies and gentlemen, our very special guest, Brian Alexander, Alexander the Great, has just gone once again beyond ringside. And we will be back on Beyond Ringside, whoops, right after this. <laughs> 